Hello, everybody. This is Tomas Fernandez and my wife, Suzanne. Suzanne is living still. We're waiting for immigration up in Canada. It's been a three-year long wait. That in itself is another story. But today we're here with part of Hope Through Arts and a new playlist that we're developing and been working on here in 2023 called Heart to Heart. Mm -hmm. Paintings that involve shapes of hearts and thoughts about hearts, the heart of God, our hearts. And uh, Suzanne has her painting she's just recently finished behind her. And I just finished this painting that I called Dark Heart right behind me. So we want to open that up and let me start off by welcoming Suzanne. Hi everyone, nice to be with you today. Uh, looks like it's a sunny day in uh, Ontario. Mm -hmm. You still have had a cool summer up there where we've had quite a few hot days in central Virginia. Yeah. So yeah. that's normal for Canada. Mm -hmm. So let me start off by talking about Dark Heart and then we'll move over into your painting and also sort of tie the two paintings together. Wow. So if you look behind me, you will see, and I, later on in the, in the broadcast, I will have sliced in a still picture close up so you can really appreciate the detail work of this painting that I've done. It's mm -hmm. basically it's a mixed media water based media uh, on a nine by 12 um, sheet of special paper painting. And you can when you look at it, you can see a dark and kind of almost a blackish form of a heart. And for me, this is a message of where God starts with our hearts. They're darkened by the world. It's come against us and hurt us. It also uh, comes against the sin that we've just done that we have to own up to. That's right. And the fact that God has something that he is so passionate to transfer to us that its job is to free us from our own sin. Mm -hmm. and make right, the right standing for his father so we can approach him in the spirit. So this is one of the roles that Jesus accomplishes at the cross. Mm -hmm. And I personally had an experience where I experienced the fire of God. And it was an all-consuming fire that burnt off all my sin. So for me, mm -hmm. it was like losing a thousand pounds. Because I was a bad boy. So, and... Uh, that's another testimony I'll say for another time. But there's something really liberating to know that this flame doesn't hurt. It actually helps. So it's, it's an oxymoron to how we normally think of fire as a destructive element. Right. So this is a fire that clears the way for healing. This is a fire that clears the way so we can hear God. That's right. And that we can love others and love ourselves. Mm -hmm. For me, that was a very difficult concept to come across. Yeah, love yeah. oneself. So this painting has the fire. Um, we were just talking before the broadcast of fire coming on the outside of the heart. It's like this is the moment where you ask God for help because you can't forgive yourself the level that God needs to forgive you. I mean, this is what happens on the cross. He atoned for our sin and has been able to his blood to offer us a brand new life. But we have to ask for it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't force love on us. Love is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. So we see the fire touching the edges of the heart and lifting the dark off of it. And mm -hmm. Suzanne mentioned about her painting. I'll let her talk about it. It's kind of a almost yeah, a it's an opposite. It's an interior view. Go ahead. It's interesting. I, I noticed that right away. It's, our paintings are similar in ways, which is so unique. And But as you can see, with Tomas's, the heart is dark, whereas the darkness around my heart is around the heart. The, it's, it's in the back. The, yeah. um, and it's, it's, it's a very interesting work. The Lord is, is, is in the process of reclaiming, restoring, and his fire is an all-consuming, our God is an all-consuming fire. And he's cleansing us through his fire. He's refining us. Yes. Out the dross out of our heart. You know, he's 
he's doing such a a wonderful work. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And it's like, he doesn't look at our sins anymore. He sees Jesus in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And, and that's, that is what is, what he's doing. And I, I just love how our, our, our hearts are showing a different working of, of what God is doing. Right. Well, one thing is, this is not a traditional two-dimensional painting. Mine has three-dimensional aspects of it, but it's not three-dimensional. Yours is really a sculpted painting. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of your inspirational background on this? Because it's for most people, this is a, a new presentation format for a painting. Yeah, I know. It's it's funny. And I think that's, I just want to mention, it's one of the greatest things that I find you and I, we have so much in common and, and only the Lord could have, done this to show his mighty working power is that you're a sculptor and you you love to work in sculpting and painting and i as well and i've i've done a lot of multimedia work and and so i just get sometimes i just like to let loose and just let things happen and i can i can do the traditional forms of painting and be very um realistic and and into all the fine details but Sometimes it's just great to just go in the Holy Spirit and just see what happens. And this is one of these pieces where it's just really evolves. And I, I start out um, just throwing the paint on the canvas and painting. And, and, and all of a sudden I knew I was going to, we were working on this series of um, heart to hearts. Is that that's what we call yeah, it? Right? That's right. And um, so we're doing a series of paintings that are, are depicting, um, illustrations or interpretations of the heart as it relates to our faith and so this this piece here is as it was evolving I could see a figure inside the heart like crouched almost like in a ball and and it, it actually reminded me the Lord brought me back to an old um, artwork I did at a very painful time in my life where I was severely wounded and it's I'm using this as an example because just recently, I went through a lot of um, emotional upheaval and turmoil, and 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 God knew this would happen. He know He goes before us. He, nothing's a surprise to the Lord, and and He allows certain things. I, I often say He uses the enemy like a tool. He uses what the enemy meant for our harm to for turn for good, good yes. right? And right. So nothing yes. is wasted in God's economy. He's got a plan, and. And and so that's our, our living hope that we don't have to be afraid. We can trust in the Lord that he is turning everything for good, giving us that the beauty for ashes, you know. And the, so so in this piece, um it just started to evolve. And I I had these uh, I I just recently took a a workshop, a drumming workshop, and there were all these skins left over that were thrown in the garbage. And I thought, oh interesting, can I can I have these? And I and I so I took a whole bunch of these strips of 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 goat Rather, skin. Yeah. What this is is goat skin, and when you soak it, it's very loose. And so I just started to shape it and put it on the canvas, and I let it dry, and it, they completely harden. They go like all these pieces are they're all, they're very firm, like they they just take their shape. And I thought, great, this is cool. I'm gonna paint on them and see what I can do. So it's it's just a fun way to re repurpose old things that, that see it even fits with the piece. It's like pieces that were thrown in the garbage, pieces that were discarded. You'd think they're they're for the garbage heap, but no, it's reclaiming and and making it into something um expressive and meaningful. And and I think that's what God wants to do is he's whatever we've done, he can undo it. And he can do he can turn anything into something. Beautiful. Well, here, here's, here's something that we haven't talked about that just was kind of revealed to me by the spirit is you've heard the, the term scapegoat. Right. That comes from the Hebrew tradition of once a year having a goat take on the sin of the community. Mm. And what we're talking about with these heart pieces is about liberating and birthing a new heart. Sometimes we feel like, you know, we don't deserve a new chance. We're too old for a new chance. Mm -hmm. We've been hurt too badly to try again. Mm -hmm. And that's not the message of the gospel. 
That's right. You know, Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. That's right. So that's what's really behind this. And I find it really fascinating. It looks to me like you, you've taken copper wire and knit things together that might have otherwise been pulled apart. That's, a, that's a, right. Some sort of a message of God's action. That's right. And this is, that's, these are the exact uh, Bible verses that were on my heart when I was painting this piece was that, yes, Jesus came to loosen all the works of the enemy, to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to set every captive free. For those who are in prison, houses, in dark places, he came to shine his light and to release the captives. So this, this is a really interesting piece that while I was even going through all this turmoil, I've been working on like seven paintings, but it just seemed just when I was processing a lot of uh, my own journey of just going through life and I, and some hard things just hit me and emotionally and it triggered my trauma from the past. And, it, and it's an example where God can take something that was meant for harm and turn it for good. And it was like a form of circumcising my heart, wherever maybe there was, you know, we we throughout life get wounded multiple times, and maybe as children we were victims, or and these these wounds can compile, and and all of a sudden you're in life, and and they can the burdens can seem very heavy, and we it's like we need the Lord every day, and He's our Savior, He's our He He gave us the Holy Spirit to help us, so we we know how much we're dependent on the Lord, but I'm I was actually grateful that I received this wounding because so much i gleaned so much goodness out of this experience it was a very humbling process it, it it hurt like hell i you know it was very very painful but god i could invite him in saying lord i need you please forgive me for how i responded under pressure help me and and just by being humble and being open to his working power he could come in and not only heal what i was going through now but i believe he was ministering. He was doing an even deeper work. He was right down to the roots of my life. My, maybe my whole genealogy, breaking that family curse. His penetrating love, I was inviting to come in and destroy all the works. Whatever's been laid on us and, and yes. to restore, right? We, we, we've, yeah. we've been doing a study about um, mm -hmm. the, the bad root that can happen as a result of trauma. Mm -hmm. and how we uh, in, inadvertently take the role of God by judging others, <clears throat> by not forgiving. And <clears throat> part of the, uh, the, the the desire here is to create, take that where the bitter root was, offer it back to the Lord for him to fill the void of what was stolen from us. And mm -hmm. sometimes through our own fault, sometimes through the fault of others, but the idea is that God's going to place something precious back where something was hurt as a, mm -hmm. as a method of his healing practice. Yeah. So we have to encourage one another to um, not judge. That's right. To walk the road of forgiveness. That's right. And, and to realize that it's not that we're saying the wrong gets off scot-free, but that's not our role to administer. No, that's God's job, mm -hmm. and we actually need to ask for God's forgiveness for when we do this, because it creates filters. Because what we're really after here in life is to remove filters, so we have an alignment and a purity of conversation, so we can hear correctly and we can receive the fullness of blessing, not just partial blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because as children of God, we want the, our full inheritance. That's right. right. We don't want just some of the presents. We don't want to hinder what he wants to give us. Exactly. So it's an important lesson in, in, in replacing roots of bitterness. And we all have them. It's not that somebody else has just got their act together and has walked the walk without it. We all have the roots of bitterness. Through hurt and abuse and mm -hmm. pride and selfishness. Mm -hmm. These are the trappings that come with the world. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that we need to step away with or from and right. when, when we venture down the, into the kingdom light. Mm -hmm. So the Lord, it reminds, reminds me, he doesn't want us to harden our hearts like in the day of rebellion. He, he, he came for, for, to take away the stony heart. 
exactly. and to give us a heart of flesh. And I like how David says, Fathers, search my heart, purify my heart. If there's any yes. wicked day in me, Lord, purify my heart and renew that steadfast spirit within me. So and, and I, God's response to David was, This is a man after my own heart. That's right. So we, we we began this journey of looking at the heart and all of a sudden phrases connected to the heart just jump out of the scriptures left and right. Mm-hmm. And we realize how central this is. It's it's kind of where our soul resides is in, in our heart area. Yes. And uh, yes. Yeah, the other bit of study we've been doing is looking at reprogramming how we think because we can train our thoughts to be more in line with the word than destructive thinking, which is something that comes with the world walk. Mm-hmm. So, and our, our brains are sort of malleable. And one of the thoughts here is that we can communicate to our brains through visual stimulus. So having uh, an image that inspires you is important to include in your house. As you can see from behind me, there's quite a few different images that we've been working hard at and staying with Suzanne and her place in Guelph is that we have them everywhere. And they're, they're visual reminders that, you know, there's a duality of kingdoms at work here. You know, we're called, God says, you're not of this world. You're, you belong to me in my kingdom. Mm-hmm. This is part of our witness and our strength of our testimony is that we're walking to a different realm. Mm-hmm. You and I have dedicated our artistic expressions to being like signposts for people to stay on the, stay on the narrow path. That's right. And it's full of vibrancy. It's not like we're talking about living in a monastic, you know, cell. We're talking about vibrancy that, that has parameters to it where God says, this is pleasing, this is displeasing. Mm-hmm. And when you love somebody, you try to do things that are pleasing to them. It's a way of growing closer and more deeply in love. Mm-hmm. And God responds the same way as you or I respond with each other. It warms his heart. Mm-hmm. That's right. I hear some lovebirds behind you. <laughs> they're, they're chiming in. They are. It's an invitation. It's God, God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. He, he, he wants all to enter, to come into his presence, to come into his welcoming arms. He loves us so much. He doesn't want anyone far from him. He doesn't want to lose anyone. It's, 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 a, it's, yeah, he steps away from the 99 to go pursue the one that's lost. That's right. And, you know, we all have people that we know who are not walking in the kingdom and we see them suffering and hurting and it moves us in an empathetic or sympathetic mm-hmm. way. We we just kind of want to say, you know, turn to the Lord. You know, he's got healing in his wings for you. And uh, but this is part of uh, he's given us something precious that we love this other child or this other parent or this other friend, we love them desperately. But in the end, we need to turn that love back to him That's right. for, for the work he has to do. And when you're dealing with dark things that are in your heart, it's like taking a splinter out. It hurts at first, mm-hmm. but That's it right. has to come out because it'll fester. That's it'll right. Much worse than it was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So this is part of the message of this particular video that we're doing is you know being brave enough asking for courage asking god for the courage take the splinters out mm-hmm. you know, let his fire be a healing fire in your life that's right yeah because god knows he knows what you're going through he knows everybody's hearts he, you, you can't hide from god he knows the deep and secret places of your heart he knows every wrong that's ever been done he knows he knows what's in our hearts and what our, our deepest desires are. And, and he wants to give us our des- the desires of our heart. He he really is a God of love, but he doesn't force his self, his love on anyone. He's totally a gentleman. He totally waits for us to seek, to knock, to open that door, to just want to seek him. You know, there's people are always looking at the appearance of things. They're always looking and judging and looking, but... 
God sees what's really going on the inside. That's that's the intimacy of God's love. And, you know, you can gain the whole world and have a big house and have many friends and all these, these things you think that according to the world standards, you've got it made. But inside you're empty, you're lonely, you're hurting, all that money, all this, these things, it doesn't, doesn't buy true happiness. And, yeah. and God wants to give us love and his life abundantly, like it's eternal life. Like it never fades away. It's forever. It's it's yes. love, right? He, he spoke this creation into existence. It's continuing to replicate itself all not that he's at the work anymore. He did it once and it's it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And we can step into this and we can step in knowing that we can make mistakes, but we have a God who is outside of time and can step into time. He doesn't always let us suffer the, the consequences that we deserve. Mm -hmm. He uses them occasionally so we learn. That's right. But he's not a mean God. He's a good God and he shelters us from most of the consequences mm -hmm. so this is his desire is share the wealth that he has that's why he laid it up he says he owns all the cattle on all the hills you know we were talking earlier today if we could even get our mind around that how many different varieties of cattle there are how many there are you know how many wild ones versus domestic ones how many feet i mean it's just ongoing that's just one little microscopic look Mm -hmm. You know, you can take that in any direction and you can get so swept up in the wonder of it that it can mm -hmm. take you for a whole lifetime of study about cows or studies about <laughs> mosquitoes or it doesn't matter or mountaintops. I mean, it's just, it's a walk of wonder. That's right. Yeah. There are things that want to block that from coming your way. And mm -hmm. so what we're here to tell you is call on him and he will make a way. He'll come find you and uh, bless you. And do a new thing completely. Like, well, like do a new thing. Never known. Right? Exactly. I mean, we see this in, in our work. We, we're like the snowflake people. We don't do the same thing twice. That's part of our draw to be artists is we're we're inventor artists and we, yeah. we because we we have a sense of experiencing his presence while we're doing the work mm -hmm. and that was one of the things that brought me back to the faith was michelangelo's hum, humble attitude like well god shows me what i don't need and i just take it away and it reveals the figure wow you know that's the world's arguably one of the world's finest sculptors painters poets architects speaking and uh, he's continually acknowledging the presence of God and I just said to myself I want that I want to be transcending with the work that I'm doing transcending what's going on in the world we're yeah. more than just what you see and feel and what's going on in the world there's so much more right there's people from all over the world right now while this video is being filmed that are looking at his work in, in Italy, that have traveled and secured airfare, hotels, all to see his work. Mm -hmm. How many years later is he still going? This is an example of God's blessing. Mm -hmm. And we just want to encourage anyone who's listening to this to ask for it. Mm -hmm. He's got a dad in heaven and a brother in heaven and the Holy Spirit in heaven. And they're givers, they're not takers. That's right. they, want, they want to have an exchange of heart to heart with you mm -hmm. and heal you in the process and also show you a future full of hope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Abundant life. God has got so much to give. There's just so much. It's, a, it's a, an endless, exhaustible supply that he loves everyone. Everyone is important. We are his masterpieces. Yes. He created us in his image. He loves all mankind. Every single living human being is valuable That's right. That's to right. the Lord. And we're not defined by what people have done or not done or, or what religion's done. Or It's just God is all we need. He, his love for us. And it's not a set, a, it's not a set of rules not a set of rules it's it's 
the relationship of lovers. It's it's called agape love, which is a love that's not carnal. It's a love that's it, the closest thing to it is like a parental love. That you just love your child. Mm -hmm. And really, there's nothing your child can do that can ever sever that love. Nice. So. That's so beautiful. Well, we will want to invite people to come back and see the next episode. We'll be featuring different heart paintings. We both have multiples already in the wings waiting. Yes, we have. And we'll continue to tell the story of heart to heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, and God bless you, and see you soon. Yes, God bless.